Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome to my Rigify tutorial series. We're at part 7F. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about how to um, customize our custom shapes in a rig. So, some of these operations are actually um, safe to do at this point, and some others aren't. So, if we remember back, um, Rigify, when it generated the rig, it made it a bunch of custom shapes and put it all on this very last layer. So, if I select all these objects, these are all mesh objects. They're all named WGT for widget, and then whatever they are for, obviously, afterwards. So, you'll notice in our outliner that there's a ton of these objects here. And it's actually kind of made a mess of our outliner. So, um, if I select them all, you'll notice that there's 213 um, widgets that were created just for this rig. So we can actually clean up the way uh, this looks in our outliner and it'll make it a little bit nicer to, to look at. So I'm going to do Shift S, cursor to center, and I'm going to do Shift A. Let's add an empty plane axis. I'm going to change that name of that axis, or that empty, to WGT OC for outliner cleanup. All right, I'm going to select all of my widget items and then using shift holding shift I'm going to make sure that my WGT OC empty object is selected last that makes it the active object control P I'm going to parent all those widgets to that empty and immediately our outliner is a lot easier um, to navigate so this is something that's safe to do if we need to uh, get a hold of one of those widgets we can always just uncollapse that we take a look at our rig you'll notice that um, the hips look a little bit uh, the hip control actually looks a little bit narrow and our chest control looks a little wide so a few other problem areas here is um, pitchy poi facial rig almost every one of these controls here is using this simple um, square box as a control so that's actually kind of hard to figure out which is which in here so I'm, I'm gonna actually go through there and uh, clean all that up I won't do that in real time I'll just show you the process and then you can do that for your own rig all right so let's turn on this last layer here let's take this chest um, widget so WDT chest I'm going to actually turn on my other layers just so I can see in real time when I'm manipulating that you can see I still have that selected I'm gonna tab into edit mode now if you move that uh, mesh object in object mode or rotate it or scale it or whatever you're not going to do anything you actually need to be in edit mode and I'm going to select all these vertices in here if I type RX let me just kind of straighten this out actually scale Z0 and let me scale this in a little bit you can see I've scaled that in I can tab back out of edit mode and for a rig turn these back on now I've resized that widget object and my um, object, let me actually move this forward here, let me reselect that widget for the chest, turn these back on, tab in edit mode, GY, oops, didn't have that selected, tab in edit mode, GY, let's kind of center that better on the chest there a little bit, scale Z0, make sure it's, all right, I turn that layer back off. Now you can see my new shape is a little bit nicer. Let's just do this for a couple more easy ones here. I'm going to select that last object, that last um, layer rather, get my WGT hips, then turn on my other layers just so I can see what I'm doing relative to that. Tab in edit mode, you can see all those vertices light up, make sure they're all selected. Scale X and drag this on a little bit. Go to side view here. We do scale Z zero, and that looks good to me. Back out of edit mode, and pretty easy to resize our shapes. Okay, so that's how you do it on a single control. Now you'll notice that there's WGT shoulder dot L, and then there's one for dot R. So in order to kind of cut down on the amount of work we do if we want to uh, change the one of these shapes, now I want to change this um, shoulder shape just because this bone shape is actually inside that mesh. So if I was not using now um, x-ray I wouldn't actually be able to um, see that. You can see I barely see that corner of that uh, that bone shape there. So that makes it very tough to select it. So I want to make a new shape that's going to be outside of our mesh. Alright, 
So I'm going to select that, and instead of um, I'm going to use the mirror modifier just to kind of save a little time, and I'm going to make a left and right at the same time. So I'm not going to actually do that for this mesh here. I'm going to select it and do Shift D to make a duplicate. I'll move this to a new layer just so it's on its own clean layer, and I can manipulate that one directly. All right, let me just turn off our mesh items here. I'm going to tab into uh, um, one of the things I want to do, like I mentioned, was use a mirror modifier, but if I just, uh, because of this odd object origin, you can see the origin is right here. Um, mirror modifier isn't directly going to work. So if I add that, um, you don't see really any difference, and it's because of that odd um, origin. What I can do, do control A and apply that location, rotation, and scale. And now the object origin is at the center of the world. Let me see. Make sure I select that again. And now it is actually mirroring across because of that object origin being at the center of the world. All right. Let's turn on our edit mode toggle for that. Actually, turn on our mesh again just so I can see what we're working on here. We do Shift S cursor to selected. And that's going to put um, that cursor right in the center of uh, all of these vertices. I'm going to do X. I'm going to delete those vertices and then Shift A. Let's add a circle. Let's make that circle. Let's do 24 vertices and let's scale this down. That circle is really large. G Z. Drag this up. We can do scale on the X axis. G X. Drag it over a little bit. Go to side view here. G Y. Kind of center it right on that shoulder. Now I think I can use my um, select this vertex in the front, that vertex in the back, and use proportional editing to quickly make a nice shape here for this control. Drag this down a little bit, take a look at the side view. GZ. I'll just adjust my fall off here a little bit. Now I get a nice circular shape. Now that's going to be a lot nicer to grab onto here. Now that I've got that um, all the vertices for the left and right, I want to apply my mirror modifier and then go back into edit mode and split this. So I'm going to select one vertex on the left side, control L to get all of these vertices, and then P to separate by selection. So now I have two um, mesh objects. I want to join these mesh objects um, to the original ones and then delete out the old vertices for those. So I'm going to turn on this last layer here. Let's turn on these last two. All right, so I'm going to select my new mesh object and shift select the old WGT shoulder.l. Control J. That's going to join them together. When you go to edit mode, I'm going to select one vertex here, control L, and delete the vertices that made up that old um, shape. And now you can see that my new object has that same origin point right there that our, the old one did. And now I can select this one, shift select the right sh side shoulder, control J, and then delete all of these, the old vertices that make up that shape. And very quickly I made a left and a right by using that mirror modifier. And in a rig, if I select it, you can see that this shoulder.l now has that new shape. And there's the widget item itself from this other layer. If I turn this off. So there you go, that's how I would make left and right objects very quickly. Now I mentioned that there are quite a few objects in here. Um, we've already parented these to our cleanup empty. We can continue on and um, create new shapes or customize them or adjust them however we want. So we'll scale Z0, let me just scale that in a little bit. I thought that uh, That neck was a little bit too big. GZ. There we go. So go ahead and manipulate all of these. Um, one thing we can do is we don't actually have to always make a new shape um, for every one of these. We can actually make one shape and then just have the bone copy that same shape. So let me make one for this ponytail back here. And I think I'm going to use that for the ponytail and all of these other hair lock pieces that I have. So I'm going to 
select WGT ponytail.001. I'm going to go into edit mode, shift S, cursor to selected. So I have a center point on all these vertices here. I'm going to delete all the old one, old mesh items that make up that. Shift A, let's add another circle. Let's just go to 16 vertices for this. And that's pretty big, so scale this down. Then RX90, spin these around. Let me actually turn on our mesh so I can see what's going on here. Scale these down a little bit. And let me rotate it just a hair. There we go. So now I've got a new custom shape for that ponytail that's not going to sit inside the mesh like this other shape. And you'll notice that that's the same shape as our um, shoulder bone that we just fixed. Okay, now that I've customized that one, let's go to Bone Properties. You'll see that um, our Ponytail.001 rig control is using the WGT Ponytail.001 custom shape. So that's the mesh object. I'm going to hover over this, do Control c to copy it. Now I'm going to select the next bone in the chain. And instead of using WGT Ponytail.002, I'm going to paste in WGT Ponytail.001. And just control V, can paste this to the next one. And I can also do that to these other hair lock bones here. So this will save us a lot of time rather than manipulating every single one of those. Um, but you do need to be careful here. If you do need to um, generate a new rig, only this widget control that we directly um, went in and changed to this circle is actually going to uh, be updated. So you'll have to manually go in there and reset our bones on the rig to use that custom shape if you generate a new rig. So that's one of those things you'll need to uh, just decide whether you want to continue on, redo or not. If you need to regenerate a new rig, I'm just going to continue on with these hair bones here. Piece that down. And there we go. So I'm not going to go any further than this, I don't believe. So I got a new circular control that's a lot easier to uh, find and see. And I don't need to have um, x ray on in order to grab a hold of it. A little bit nicer to work with. Alright. So I'm not going to go through and do any more facial bones or things like that. Um, it's pretty much the same process. Just select the widget that you want to um, customize. Go in edit mode, customize it however you want. Um, I showed you the trick to make uh, using the mirror modifier to make both new shapes. And one more thing we can do. And also this is one of those things that's not going to um, transfer across in, in, in order uh, if we ever um, need to delete our rig and generate a new one, this next thing that I'm going to show you uh, isn't going to work. Uh, it won't transfer across, but it is a way to organize our bones here. If I go to our uh, armature panel, come down into our bone groups, expand this out a little bit, I'm going to add two new groups here. I'll name one left, name one right, and now we can actually assign bones to that group. So I'm going to assign some control bones. A to deselect everything. I'm going to use box select to get all of these left hand uh, arm bones here. I'm going to um, assign them to the left bone group with assign. And I can also change our default colors of those controls. So if I just take this theme color one, it's going to change all those controls to a red color. So that can be very handy to um, organize our bones. But like I said, if you delete this rig, these bone groups aren't going to go. When you generate a new rig, these bone groups will be gone because you'll be deleted the rig. So you'll need to do this again. So uh, the correct time to do this is after you know that you don't need to regenerate a new rig. So I'm going to select my right hand bones here and assign them to the right bone group. 
and let's just pick a different theme here let's go with four I know that one's blue and so now I have right side is, or left side is red and right side are blue this makes it really nice when you have a lot of pull targets um, sometimes these can get crossed up and it can be difficult to see uh, what goes to what so that is another way we can organize our rig uh, and customize the way our rig controls look I hope these tips help until next time good luck